What's going on guys, Andrew Pellick Hockey here back with another video and today we're talking about two names that have been around the trade rumors and obviously free agent frenzy uh, for a while now, both of them in their respective categories and just being traded or you know signing a contract. It's Jake Gardner and Rasmus Ristolainen. Now of course Jake Gardner, former member of the Toronto Maple Leafs, possibly still a Toronto Maple Leaf, and Rasmus Ristolainen, a Buffalo Sabre who could possibly be traded and it's looking more and more like that deal uh, could happen sooner than later. It, it, and this is the big thing, if Buffalo really wants to make that move. So I thought we would start off with Jake Gardner and a lot of this information is coming from different sources but because Spectres Hockey always puts together those sources I thought I would have some notes from his uh, his article but also I'm, I'm giving my opinion. So basically Elliot Freeman on Sportsnet was talking about Jake Gardner and with it being so close to training camp like why hasn't he signed? Now he believes that there's still mutual interest between Gardner and the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now this is something that has been constant. Gardner still wants to prove himself, I believe, with the Leafs, and he wants to win with Toronto, but it's th this is just like a huge thing for Gardner. He has to make the decision on whether or not he wants to come back uh, on a cheaper deal and, and kind of risk it, because... People seem to think that it's impossible that Gardner can come back, but this is this is the reason why I believe it's a big possibility. The market for Gardner, if if teams are just not willing to sign him at this point, which doesn't make sense to me, uh, I you would figure a former 50-point defenseman uh, is a guy that would be highly touted. If the market is not really high on Jake Gardner right now, then it's it's a way bigger possibility that he comes back. But if there's still a big market there, then the possibility is less and less. Now, the the way that Gardner can stay is if Mitch Marner does end up signing a bridge contract in the, you know, 8 to $9 million range, which is a very high increase on a bridge deal. I don't believe it should be that high, but with the negotiations on how far apart they've been, I believe Luke Fox even touched on it in the podcast with Elliot Freeman, uh, 31 Thoughts, that because of the distance between the two, that, uh, and again, I'll get to Marner in another video because there has been recent chatter, of course, like always, but that, that Marner is going to have to sign a bridge deal two or three years, and it could be in the 8 to $9 million range, which is, is definitely not where it should be. But if let's say it's like 8.5, just in the middle at like three years, which I think it's going to be two, and it's probably going to be in the $8 million range, hopefully. Then it's a huge possibility Gardner comes back because then he takes a short one-year deal, gets paid two or three million dollars or whatever. They, maybe they make a trade and and you know free up a little bit more money, like a Cody CC trade or or somebody else to to free up space to give Gardner a little bit more, maybe on a two-year deal. I don't know. Uh, there's lots of possibilities, but if Gardner wants to prove himself that he can get a big contract next season and prove that his back is okay and he's healthy then it makes a lot of sense because he's comfortable in Toronto. He knows the staff there. He knows the medical staff. He, he's been here for a while. Like He's been here for a long time. And if people think that Jake Gardner coming back to Toronto was a bad thing, then give your head a shake. This guy last year basically was hurt for, for the whole playoffs and basically, what, 20-some games. So in 62 games, he you know... He, he he didn't play a lot because he was hurt. Like I said, you know, he didn't play a full 82. He had 30 points. So let's say he plays a full 82. He has to hit 40 points again. Like, that that's insane. And he was basically not playing at 100% for some of those games because, you know, they said that this injury was, was ailing for a while. The year before that in 82 games, 52 points. The year before that in 82 games, 43 points. Before that in 79, 31. Like Gardner's been putting up a lot of points and people don't look into advanced statistics. They don't look into advanced numbers. People always say, well, you know, he makes a lot of big mistakes, which he does. Gardner's made a ton of big mistakes. Like, let, let's be honest here, he, he has. But if you, if you watch the Toronto Maple Leafs, name three defensive partners that, that Jake Gardner's had that actually can play defense. I'm waiting. It's like his defensive partners have been absolutely terrible. And people are like, oh, he played with Morgan Riley. Well, I mean, the sample size isn't that big. They didn't play together that much. And keep in mind, if you look at advanced statistics for the past two or three years, Jake Gardner has similar, if not better, defensive numbers than Morgan Riley does. And he's also been put in probably worse positions than Morgan Riley has. So, I mean,. I'm just going to say it right now, like, he's definitely underrated. He puts up a lot of points. Look at what the Canucks just gave Myers. He's better than Tyler Myers. Myers is a right-handed shot. That's probably why he got signed to, to big money. 
He, Myers is good. Don't get me wrong. But Gardner's better than him. Uh, I, I don't know how you could say he isn't. Um, but some other teams that could be involved here, Friedman says, could be the Montreal Canadiens, which we've heard, we've heard a lot about, the Arizona Coyotes, the Winnipeg Jets, who need to make some big moves fast, and uh, the Buffalo Sabres, maybe, if they unload Rasmus Ristolainen. So uh, the, the Hurricanes also, that's another option. Uh, Luke Fox also believes that Montreal is, is probably a, a big destination for him, or the Red Wings, the New Jersey Devils. Uh, th there's a lot of teams that would be involved for him. And I think they should be because Gardner with the right defensive partner can do wonders for you. Like the guy should be able to be an offensive threat and, you know, skate up the zone without, you know, he has to come back and play defense and he's fast. So he does come back. It's just he's not the best defensively. We all know that. And if you play with a guy that's more defensively sound, then it makes a lot of sense. And people are saying, well, you know, Gardner might not want to come back to Toronto because he might be on the third pairing. I don't know what world we're living in here, but I don't see how Jake Gardner would come back on the third pairing, especially right away. Travis Dermott's going to be hurt to start the season. And if Gardner comes back, why in the hell would Cody Ceci be above him on a depth chart? Only because he's a right-handed shot? I feel like they would move people down in order to get Gardner uh, up into the second pairing. Or people are like, well, he won't get minutes. If Gardner's on a third pairing and he's with a guy that can play a little bit of defense, or if you just let him run wild and just Gardner go out there and fill the net, he's going to make good passes and, you know, get pucks to the to the players. Like, I don't know if you've ever watched Jake Gardner, but he's a fantastic skater. He's an elite skater, and he's an elite puck-moving defenseman. If you don't think that he is, then we can't have a, a knowledgeable hockey conversation. His defensive zone stuff is terrible. Like, let's be honest here. He's not very good. But, and I can't even say terrible, it's just not good. Because Morgan Riley's in the same boat as him. Offensive threat, amazing, elite offensively. But in the defensive zone, Morgan Riley is not that good. And it's the same thing with Jake Gardner. These guys have amazing skill. And with put with the right defensive partner, they can run a little bit more free. And, you know, the defensive zone, unfortunately, is, is a second thing for them. They're, they're not really, they're worried, but they're not exactly the best at it. Let's, let's put it there. So... Um, yeah, I already touched on the Marner stuff, so let's just get to Ristolainen and, and, of course, the Gardner stuff there. It all depends on the Marner contract for Toronto, and other than that, once that domino falls, maybe Gardner is going to focus on another team. Because to me, it seems like he's waiting for the Leafs to do something, or he's waiting for a team because there's been, like, the, the handshake thing that they, they might, you know, Gardner might already have a contract in place. Uh, a team just has to make another move. So that's a big possibility. Now... The Buffalo Sabres. Um, it's looking like Rasmus Ristolainen is probably going to get moved, but to me, like I feel like Buffalo should hold on to him. Like Ristolainen is a good talent. Looking at his numbers, he's only 24, right-handed shot, big guy, 6'4". Last year, he put up 43 points. The year before that, 41. The year before that, 45. The year before that, 41. Like This guy knows how to put up points. Now, he isn't like, again, he's not some like big elite defensive defenseman, but it seems to me like this is just a guy that should be in Buffalo, but the relationship might not be there. So, looking deeper into this, uh, the Buffalo News, there was a reporter there, uh, Lance Losowski, I, I don't want to mispronounce his name, I probably did, but let's just say Lance from the Buffalo News was, was touching on some points here uh, about Rasmus Ristolainen and saying that, uh, you know, a move could come, uh, possibly, but they're, uh, they're saying that it, it, the unrestricted free agent and the, or sorry, the restricted free agent market could be affecting why Rasmus Ristolainen isn't signing. So uh, he said one reason could be the unusual large number of restricted free agent stars that are still unsigned by several teams. That includes the Jets, who seem uh, like an ideal fit for the uh, Ristolainen deal. Now, he also feels Ristolainen uh, didn't do the Sabres any favors uh, by publicly voicing his frustrations, which we've heard about, of course, um, hurting the club's leverage in the trade market. I don't think that it would hurt it that much. Like Ristolainen, like I said, big body, 6'4", can put up points, right-handed shot. I don't think that it's really affecting it too much. Uh, he points out they're not going to move the blue liner unless they get a high upside 24-year-old right-handed shot defenseman with a reasonable contract. So, if you look at that, that puts a very small number of players that they could trade for, and it's almost impossible to me. Like, how are you going to get back somebody as good or better without, you know, this being like a fantastic hockey one-for-one -one deal? This is a very, very narrow list of players that you're dealing with here. 
And I don't know if teams are going to be willing to do that. Like, if, if they already have that, why would they just trade for another one? Like, unless they feel like Ristolainen has a better fit to their team. Like, I, I don't know how that would work. But it just seems like they should just hold on to him. They got to fix that relationship. And Buffalo's just made a move to putting Matt Hunwick on the LTIR. So that freed up a little bit of space. Maybe this just blows over and they end up keeping him. Because Ristolainen, like I said, like he's he's part of a small group of defensemen in the league that you know this is a good fit like I feel like Buffalo needs a guy like this and they already have one so what like you can add to that defensive core without trading Erasmus Ristolainen so if a team like Winnipeg ends up making their moves and they they trade Ehlers or they trade Connor or Line I don't know what's going to happen there but if they they work out their contracts maybe Ristolainen's in the card so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I know I went on like mini rants for both of subjects here but um Tell me down below what's going to happen. Where's Gardner going? Where's Ristolainen Rist going? Are they going to stay put in both their teams? Let me know down below, and hopefully I'll see you guys in the next video or stream. Peace.